Welcome to Public Safety Talk Radio, the podcast for all of our heroes in public safety, including law enforcement professionals, firefighters, EMTs, corrections officers, healthcare workers, and more. This show is produced by the POCUA and is founded upon its Soundness Initiative. This episode is sponsored by Police Mortgage. Police Mortgage is a full-service mortgage company dedicated to serving police officers and first responders. Founded in 2008, Police Mortgage offers a variety of mortgage products tailored to meet the needs of those who serve and protect. Police Mortgage, for first responders who are second to none. I am Ken Bader, your host for Public Safety Talk Radio, and I have a return guest. I know all of you that are listening or watching diligently watch and listen to every single show. So you'll remember this gentleman uh, from our third season. His name is Austin Glickman. He is the president of Leo Weekend or LEO Weekend or Law Enforcement Officer Weekend, whichever you want to call it. Uh, If I remember it correctly, he is an active NYPD officer. Uh, And he's got a master's degree someplace, so he's a smart guy. But, you know, Austin, welcome back, man. Thanks, Ken. And I, uh, I pretend to be as smart as I look, but I'm not. <laughs> well, you know, you know, like I said before, I pressed the board, you know, we both go to the same barber, even though, even though we're on two different coasts. Um, so, you know, I don't know if this makes us look smarter that we have no hair um, or not, but uh, I'll let the audience figure that one out. I don't think that we should make that a public poll. I don't want to know the answer. Yeah, yeah. It's better, it's better to be ignorant. You know, in, in yeah, life, many yeah. times, you know, like probably, you know, some of the people that you arrest, you know, it's probably just better to be ignorant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, uh, while we can have a lot of fun with that, let's talk about what you're doing for your organization here in 2024. I know you've got an event coming up in just like a week or two. Uh, we want to hear about that. And then you've got a big cruise coming later in 2024. So tell us about those two things. We certainly do. We we do about 20 events a year now. So, Holy uh, crap. Two, yeah, 20 yeah, events a year? Time, yeah, since the last time we spoke, you, we, we just continued to expand. Do you, um, do, you, do you like still like work like as a police officer? Or do you yeah, just yeah, do 20 time. events? I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm headed to work in, in about an hour from now. So, um it's you know I like to joke around and I tell people that I'm a full time nonprofit president and I'm a part time police officer, <laughs> even though I still work five days a week as a police officer. It's mm-hmm. it's constant, but I, I get a lot of love and support uh, from my agency. Um, although we're not an official organization with the department, they obviously know what I do. A lot of the volunteers that I that I, uh, I have under me are all also active uh, near city police officers or from other nearby agencies and. They see all the great work that we're doing, so they don't usually give us a hard time. And they, you know, when we need a day off or if we need to make a phone call here or there, as long as it's not interrupting, obviously, patrol or, or you know, some, you know, emergency duties, typically everyone sure. works cohesively. Sure, so. I was going to do this drug bust, but hold on a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm negotiating <laughs> yeah. with the Hyatt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So obviously there are times where we have to, you know, reschedule meetings because of things that happen, especially here in New York, as I'm sure you're aware. There's always something going on. Um, we are... It's, the like Mecca. Los, it's like Los Angeles where I live. There's there's no crime yeah. in LA or New no, York. No, no. Yeah, there's nothing no going crime. on. Yeah. There's just always something going on that's not planned for. And listen, we just have to roll with it, right? So yeah. that's when you work in this line of work, obviously as all of your listeners know, it's just the way of our world, our way of our lifestyles, and you just kind of go with it. So um, all right, so let's jump into it. So um for the for those of you who know who we are, or maybe you've seen my face on TikTok or Instagram. Uh, Law Enforcement Officers Weekend is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And essentially what we do is we work with the families of officers that were either seriously injured or killed in the line of duty. And we bring them on uh, all expenses paid vacations. That's our main goal. Uh, We do events down in Miami. We have a cruise, as you mentioned, going to the Bahamas in October. We do events here in New York. And we do events really throughout the, the U.S. And like I said, we continue to expand each year. What makes us different, though, from so many other other mm-hmm. uh, unbelievable organizations is that these events are not exclusive to just those families. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you, as a supporter of law enforcement or an active member or a retired member of law enforcement, can come to these events with us and support the families of these fallen or injured officers. Obviously, you're going to pay your own way, but it's at a significantly discounted rate because we have such a large group that typically go to these events. Uh, 
So aside from these weekend getaways, we also do a lot of events with professional sporting teams. We work very closely being that we're a New York based organization, the Yankees, the Mets, the Rangers and the Islanders. We work with them wholeheartedly all the time. They're unbelievable organizations who truly support law enforcement. Uh, we bring the families of officers again, who were seriously injured or killed in the line of duty to those events. They will typically throw out the first pitch or we'll get them on the field with some players. We get them, you know, hats and just sign memorabilia. And then again, we have another say 500 people that show up to the event uh, at discounted rates. And they also get to experience part of these fan experiences. And it's a really great time. Um, so it's, it's the, uh, what, what we say is one of our mottos is uh, bringing your blood and blue families together where nice. we will, we take uh, all these other officers or retired officers and we surround these families that are going through something that hopefully none of us have to ever experience in our lifetime. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, as we all know, as first responders, we, we will be affected in some way, shape or form by one of our, our coworkers getting seriously injured or killed. Yeah. So we kind of know what they're going through um, and we just surround them with as much love and support and appreciation as possible. And we've been doing it since 2017. We, by the end of this year, we'll have hosted close to 90 families to different events, nice. um, hundreds of thousands of uh, followers on, on social media, tens of thousands of, of, of attendees that come to these events every single year. And, uh, yeah, it's a great organization, and I'm, I'm just I'm super uh, proud and, and honored to, uh, to 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 lead it. Um, and a shout out to all the volunteers and the rest of our board of directors who do it because nobody receives a paycheck, myself included. This is 100 percent volunteer. Uh, we even pay our own way to go to these events. Like sure. our own board members are are shilling out money out of their own pocket uh, to work the event that they're 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 going to, and they pay their own way. So it's yeah, very commendable for everyone who's involved. Now, when you go on this cruise, do you get the one with the balcony or do you just get the inside cabin where you can't no, see no, no. shit? So, <laughs> no, so Elio weekend, we go all out, right? We we start from the, from the what is the stratosphere, whatever the highest level is. I'm mm. not, obviously, I'm a police officer for a reason. I don't really know science too well, but <laughs> we start from the top and we ask for as much as possible. And then we, we go lower and lower as needed. So as the cruise, for an example, we 100% hook up these families with the suite and we hook mm -hmm. them up with the balcony rooms overlooking, you know, the ocean. So we never, you know, give them the minimum. We always give them the maximum. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's really thanks in part from all the amazing donors and sponsors that we have. Uh, our average budget, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so this mm -hmm. is very um, – publicly known yeah, uh, we have to we, yeah yeah we have to be transparent we have to let everyone know how much money we bring in each year how much money we spend each year we we spend roughly two hundred thousand dollars a year if not more uh to put on these events these events are very expensive mm -hmm. you know imagine having to pay for hotels and flights and 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 put down down payments on uh 500 tickets to a yankee game you know that's mm -hmm. a lot of money right and that's just one event yeah. so imagine doing 20 of them um so we do a ton of fundraising and a ton of uh events and activities um, when we do these, these smaller events, like the one that's coming up June 2nd, which I'll talk about now, yep. um, th that is, it's the first ever event that we've done like this. It's an equestrian event. Um, I am naive. I didn't really know what that meant up until just a few weeks ago when my, uh, some of my members brought this to my attention. Mm -hmm. So essentially what it is, it's at Palomine in Icelandia, New York. So it's out in Suffolk County for any of your listeners that are here in the New York metropolitan area, they'll probably know where that is. Mm -hmm. Um, but for, for me, for me, who's like 3000 miles away, where the hell is it? <laughs> so it's, 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 it's Are you looking for a podcast to answer some financial questions? Well, then check out the Mortgage Beat podcast brought to you by Police Mortgage for first responders who are second to none. Mortgage Beat gives insight into the home loan process specifically for police officers, firefighters and other public safety professionals. The podcast is hosted by Police Mortgage CEO John Aritos, who has decades of experience in the mortgage industry. Check out Mortgage Beat on Spotify today. It's on Long Island. It's yeah. out in Suffolk County, which where um, so everyone thinks the geography of New York is New York City and it's skyscrapers and you know um, or. Uh, 
ghettos, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, um, sure. You know, there's the Finger Lake region. You know, there's right. Syracuse. I hear they got a university there. You know, there's, yep, there's, even, well there's even Buffalo where they got a team that can't win the Super Bowl, but continue. Right, right. <laughs> and then you, have, then you have Long Island. And Long Island is essentially, we call it like the sixth borough of New York City. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's the suburbs, right? So you have Nassau County, which, which borders New York City. Uh, which is pr primarily all suburban and, and um, your typical, you know, houses of suburbia. Then you go out to Suffolk County. Suffolk County, people call it like uh, Suffolk Bama. Uh, it's it's the <laughs> Alabama of New York City. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way by any means. Um, a lot of farmland out there, a lot of more open lands. Um, also, plenty of, of suburban area as well. But uh, it's it's a beautiful spot. And because of that, there are a lot of horses out there, a lot of horse uh, equestrian clubs out there. So Palomine is a nonprofit organization like ourselves. And what they do is they do therapeutic equestrian events. They work very closely with the military, members of veterans, law enforcement, first responders. And they bring families to their uh, massive farm, we'll call it. Um, and they do a bunch of activities with the families to get them to relax and unwind and to have these therapeutic sessions with these massive horses, which is kind of a, a, an odd concept to me because I've had never really had heard of it until recently. Yeah. So we're going to bring over 300 people on June 2nd to this event. And if anyone's interested in going, we still have plenty of tickets. You can even buy tickets at the door. Just go to leoweekend.com slash horses. And you'll see all the list of activities that are going on. There's a petting zoo. There's donkey rides. There's horsemanship demonstrations. We have different canine teams from across the uh, the New York area coming down to show what their what their canine skills uh, are. Um, we do, we're doing like a touch a truck event with different armored vehicles and fire trucks and ambulances. And there's going to be horseshoe painting, uh, sound therapy, just a ton of stuff going on between 10:30 in the morning and 3:30 in the afternoon. Obviously, you don't have to stay the entire time, but come on out. Have a great day at the farm. Uh, it is weather permitting, so if there is a rain uh, out, we will have the event the following Sunday. I believe it's June 9th, mm -hmm. and tickets are only 15 bucks. Yeah. and kids five and under are free. This is not meant to be like a massive moneymaker for us. This is just a way for us to give back and to uh, allow these first responder families. It's not just law enforcement. I just want to make that perfectly clear. If you are any type of first responder family or military, um, you are welcomed, and we encourage you to come with out, come to with your family, come with your friends, and just have a really nice day on the farm. It's going to be a lot of fun. And again, it's our first time ever doing this, but um, we have already ha had a, a significant uh, amount of tickets sold, so we think nice. it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be a great event. You know, you're you're very New York centric, as you mentioned. Although, you know, you mentioned I think the the Yankees, the Islanders, the Rangers. You didn't mention the Knicks, probably because they can't beat the Pacers. But <laughs> we um... want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, looking you know past 2024, what are you? Because it's such a great concept, you know, in yeah. getting people together and getting people. You know, there's so many people. You know, despite what the news says and, you know, some of the feelings out there in certain areas, you know, there are people like myself that have never been a first responder, but, you know, are, are more than happy to support police officers where, you know, you look and say, you know, hey, you know, I want to take a cruise to the Bahamas. Why not do this and, you know, have a good vacation and, you know, support a good cause at the same time. So it makes a lot of sense. What uh, what are you doing to, you know, possibly grow beyond New York? You know, maybe, you know, the LAPD or the uh, New Orleans PD or or so on and so forth. What are you doing to maybe go after some of those sports teams? And, you know, maybe maybe we want to take a Mississippi cruise or something. You know, <laughs> what, are, what are we doing beyond New York in 2025? Yeah. All right. So I got a lot to say about this. Awesome. Uh, cool. We, yeah. We got, so we got, well, we, we got plenty of time. Plenty so of time. <laughs> so first and foremost, just so everyone is clear, although we are based in New York and many of our volunteers are obviously New York law enforcement, we are a national nonprofit organization. And what I mean by that is that when we bring these families to these events, uh, most of the time, 95% of the time, they're not from New York. They're from across mm -hmm. the country. Nice. Uh, a lot of the attendees that we get are not even from New York. Again, obviously, if they're coming to a Yankee or a Mets game, 
they're going to be from the New York metropolitan right. area. Logistically, it's just easy for them to get to. But as the cruise, as an example, we have law enforcement officers from literally across the country, uh, even as far as England, that have come to our event. Wow. So yeah. don't think that because you're not a New York police officer means that you can't come. No, that's completely not the case. Um, the events are open to everybody. So if you're interested in coming to one of our events, whether it be a, a Yankee game as an example or the cruise, um, it doesn't matter what department you work for or who you work for or just, again, you don't even have to even be a law enforcement officer. You could be a first responder. You could be military. You can be just a general supporter of, of law enforcement. You're more than welcome to come. We, and again, highly encourage it. So what now? What I'm about to say next has not been made public yet until right now. Awesome. I just got the, I you heard it first the, on Public Safety Talk Radio. Hearing it first on Public Safety <laughs> Talk Radio. I just got off the phone about an hour ago with the Miami Dolphins. Nice. And as of Wednesday, when we officially signed the contract, we will be hosting a Miami Dolphins versus New York Jets, because we still got to keep the New York in there, in Miami on December 8th. Nice. Tickets will go on sale very shortly. It's going to be a law enforcement appreciation game. It's a one o'clock game. We're going to be working directly with the Fraternal Order of Police down there in the South Florida area, as well as the PBAs. Very weird down in Florida. Some have FOPs, some have PBAs, some have a mix of both. I don't understand the politics down there. All I know is that they both exist. So we'll be working with both those organizations, Good. from the departments across the uh, the South Florida area. And uh, we're going to be doing most likely like a two and a half hour tailgate pregame. We're going to be doing an on field photo after the game is over, t shirts, uh, and, and, and tickets in the 300 level uh, in one of the end zones. So tickets won't be on sale just yet. But what I highly recommend people doing, because we expect the tickets to sell out inst- insanely quick, um, just follow us on social media. So follow Law Enforcement Officers Weekend on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram uh, at LEO underscore weekend. Or if you want, you can follow me personally on either Instagram or TikTok on uh, at Officer Glick, all one word, Officer Glick, G-L-I-C-K. And you will, if you follow one of those four or all four, you will 100% uh, get notified when those tickets go on sale. Nice. So, so we have that event coming up. So that's outside, obviously, of the New York area. We have our Bahamas cruise, which just so happens to also be out of Miami this year. Um, I th- and those we're pretty much sold out of that. So, um, but if you're interested in going in 2025, uh, it's going to be, be, I believe, October 10th to the 13th, 2025, out of Port Miami on Wonder of the Seas, which is Royal Caribbean's one of their largest ships. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Icon of the Seas just got released, so I think they they just took the, uh, the title for largest cruise ship like in the world. I think Wonder is like second or third biggest. It's huge. It's massive. Um, we've now done the Bahamas cruise two years in a row. Uh, obviously, 2025 will be our third year. And it is a wonderful experience. Um, we typically bring about five families of injured, uh, excuse me, of fallen officers mm-hmm. to, the, uh, to the event. Again, from the minute they get in the Uber at their home to the minute that they get back home, we pay for everything. And that includes their open drink packages. It includes all their food, their hotel, their flights, everything you would think of, we pay for. Um, we have about 250 people going on the cruise this year with us. So last year, the first year, we had 130. This year, we have 250. Next year, I can't even imagine how many we're going to have. Yeah. Because people you know, tell their friends how much fun they had, and then they, they end up coming next year. And the word just spreads like wildfire. And uh, we will 100% be the largest group on the boat. Uh, the boat holds around about 5,000 people or so. We'll have 250. Doesn't sound that large, but for a group, that's actually quite quite a large size. Yeah. Um, everybody gets a T-shirt. Everybody gets a wristband. Um, so when we're walking around, you'll know, hey, I, I know that wristband. That you're you're one of us. And it's just a way to, to start conversations. And it's also a way to feel comfortable around uh, certain people. And that way, you don't have to lie to somebody and say you work in sanitation. Yeah. You could tell them, yes, I am a police officer. I see that you're a police officer or the family of the law enforcement or something along those lines. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really great um, way to, to meet new people. We've had families from previous events who've met each other from across the country. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, now they even fly out and spend Thanksgiving with one another. Wow. They, they create these bonds that most other professions, firefighters are probably pretty close. EMS and military are probably a close third. But – Man, law enforcement, it's just something about law enforcement that 
nobody truly understands what we go through unless you're another law enforcement family. Yeah. Um, so connecting with somebody or, or another family on the same level uh, is something special. And a lot of our attendees come from really small departments. So mm-hmm. like, you know, it's hard for me to even understand because I'm coming from the NYPD, the largest department in the world, right? Yeah. Where there's 35,000 of us and it's, you know, you could throw a rock in any direction in New York and you know, <laughs> it'll land next to a New York City police officer. So what I do know though, because we like, obviously with the NYPD, we like to gloat about who we are. Sure. <laughs> um, I do know that if you were to add the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth largest departments in the country together, they still don't add, equal the size of the NYPD, which is wild. Right. Yeah. So that just shows how large of an apartment is. So again, it's hard for me to even understand sometimes what these much smaller departments are going through. Mm-hmm. So when you have a, a family coming from, you know, somewhere in middle America, you know, Indiana or Missouri or Mississippi, and, and they may only have 10 other coworkers or five other coworkers. Right. So they don't fully understand uh, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the sisterhood that we have in law enforcement. Then they come to one of our events. And their minds are blown. They're like, I just didn't know this even existed. I didn't know that that there was this amount of of love and support for for you know between fellow families of, of law enforcement. So that's one of the things I think really sets our organization apart from others. Listen, there are plenty of other organizations out there that do really really amazing work mm-hmm. that also offer these weekend getaways. We'll, we'll use cops as an example, and we're we're we love cops. I I just went to their gala in Washington D.C. this past week during during police week and uh first and foremost if anyone from cops is watching bravo that was a beautiful beautiful conference uh mm-hmm. not conference a uh, gala um and they, it was it was, was it a gala or a gala <laughs> well i don't know how you want to pronounce it here in new york we say gala, <laughs> gala. <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean they just do such great work and we got to see a lot of these families who who, who uh, cops support and they just do work that a lot of it goes on behind the scenes, mm-hmm. so we don't typically see it. I obviously know of it because of all, you know just being in the nonprofit world and you know working with them uh, again behind the scenes. But a lot of people don't see what they do, and they're these people are like miracle workers. So shout out to cops. Mm-hmm. Um, but so again, just using them as an example, they uh, they offer some weekend getaways too, uh, but they're private, right? They're only open to the families or the children, like the, the kids camp that they do every year. Um, they have the the uh, spouse retreat, or they also mm-hmm. have the coworker retreat. But again, they're they're, they're smaller and they're private. Um, our event, as I explained earlier, is fully open to anybody to attend. The families plus everybody else. Mm-hmm. So it really creates that really interesting dynamic uh, between the families, between the rest of our attendees, and it just jives. It works. I don't know why. I don't know how. And listen, every year is different, right? Mm-hmm. Some years we have. Um, you know, family dynamics that, that maybe they're an older family or sometimes they're a younger family. And, you know, I can't promise that every single event is going to be, you know, mind blowing, but for the most part, we, we, we get these families that uh, have such great time that they come year after year afterwards and they pay their own way after that. They they say, we just, we want to be part of this and we want to meet new families and we want to just help them as much as we can. And um, I think, so last year we had, like I said, five families on the cruise, Three out of the five are returning this year, but I, I think that 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 goes to show how how you know how much fun and, yeah. and 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 you know love that they got during the the event that they want to come back again. Yeah, that you got something special there. Yeah. Um, as we begin to wrap up a little bit, um, tell us a little bit about the experience. And I know every event is different. Uh, but do you have uh any types of programs within the event like you're on the cruise and say hey we're all getting together for yeah. this seminar we're all getting together to to you know throw balls at austin and drop them into the <laughs> pool or whatever whatever the heck it is do you, do you have some structure to these events yes. for for the specific folks that are coming from you know for uh leo weekend yeah great question so um what we like to say is that we do offer a structure However, uh, if, if you don't want to do any of what we're offering, this is your vacation, right? So you can turn this vacation into whatever you deem fit. And what I mean by that is we use the cruise as an example. 
we create an itinerary and we say, hey, guys, this is the itinerary. This is where the boat is stopping on these certain days. This is where we're going to be. This is where most of the board members from LEO Week and our volunteers uh and then we've done this now for a few years in a row. And I'm also an avid cruiser. Um, we know what works best on a lot of these boats and like mm-hmm. the best bars, the, you know, the best things to do once you're off the boat. And we'll, we'll give that on this itinerary. We'll, it's both an electronic itinerary and a hard itinerary. Mm-hmm. So we'll say, Hey, uh, there's going to be karaoke tomorrow night at this bar on the boat. We're going to be there. If you want to come join us, please come join us. We also always have, we always have an opening ceremony where we honor the families. That might be the only sad part of, of our events. Mm-hmm. What also makes us very different is that we don't require any speeches from the families. We don't require them to wear suits or ties or dresses. Mm-hmm. We want them in flip flops and a bathing suit and, and throw a t-shirt on and come in, you know, come into the, the bar that we're going to meet at. And we're going to do a little opening ceremony. We're going to recognize that you're on the boat and we're not going to mourn the loss of your loved one. Mm-hmm. Cause you've, you've been doing that 364 days out of the year. Right. Instead, we're going to celebrate their lives. Yeah, that's one of our other mottos that we use. We have a lot of mottos on Elio Weekend, um, <laughs> and I think the families really love hearing that because you know, there's just so m- how many times you know uh, can you give a, a speech? How many times are you going to put on a black dress? How many times are you going to stand there and shed a tear? Like at some point, we have to say we're going to celebrate their lives. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. party in their honor. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna we're gonna laugh. We're gonna dance because we all know that if they were still here, they would want to be doing the same thing. Yeah. Right. They're looking down at us having a, a joyful time in their honor. And I think it's a really good way to, to think about, you know, just events in general. I wish more places did this. You know, we what we had 282 names to the to the memorial wall this year in DC. Yeah. 282. Now, not all 282 died last year. Some died the year before. Some died many, many years ago. And we're just now finding out about it. Right. But 137 of those names were from last year alone. I wish I could help all 137 families. I can't. I don't make I don't make enough money to do that. You know, we don't have the logistics to do that. Maybe one day we will. Mm-hmm. But you know, this year we're doing at least 11 families, probably uh, closer toward 15 to 20 by the end of the year. Um, but 20 out of 137, and that's just that, that's just the, the past year, right? You know, we're talking the past. You know, we've been in operation now for eight years. How many have we lost over eight years? Oh, well yeah. over a thousand. You know, how many can I help? So I wish there was more organizations out there. People say, oh, well, it's great not having a lot of competition. First off, I don't call it competition. I call it partners, you know, and mm-hmm. potential, you know, friends who, because we're all working for the same cause, or at least we should be. Um, I wish there were more organizations out there that, that, that do what we do yeah. <laughs> uh, in layman's terms, because uh, more families would be able to get help. You know, I, I love what you're doing. You know, there, there's some uniqueness to it. And most importantly, there's, there's a lot of heart. In, in what's going on here for for those folks out there that want to participate and or support leo weekend whether it's to go to palamine here on june 2nd i believe you, yep. you mentioned on june 2nd that's coming up you know very very quickly or the uh, cruise to the bahamas later or the the dolphins jet Jets game, two teams I couldn't care less about. Um, <laughs> I'm a Bears fan, so I'm long suffering. Um, <laughs> but you know, for those folks that want to support and participate this year, next year, beyond, how best can they find you? Easiest way: go to our website, leoweekend.com. The letters L E O, and then the word weekend, all one word, leoweekend.com. You'll see a list of some of the upcoming events, especially the Palomine event, especially the cruise, because we do have a few cruise rooms left. Mm-hmm. Again, Palomine, we have plenty of tickets. If, if they're looking to go to any of our events, just follow us on social media. Go to the website. You can contact me directly through the website or social media. I read every single comment. I read every single private message. Um, and we're also looking for sponsors. Every event that we do, we're always looking for sponsors. Because, again, like I said earlier, these events cost tens of thousands of dollars. And without sponsors and partners, no possible way we'd be able to do it. We're still looking for sponsors for for Palomine. We're looking for sponsors for the cruise and so many more events up and coming in 2024 and 2025. So reach out to us. If you're an organization, if you're a company, or maybe you're just somebody who's a philanthropist and you just want to help, we're always looking for it. Again, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We have our EIN both in New York and in Florida. um, And we can get more if needed in, in other states, which hopefully we're going to be expanding into over the next few years. 
I'd love to do a Colorado event. I would love to do a Texas event. I'd love to do an event out in California. You know, it's just, it takes time, but we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. What you're, what you're doing is awesome. Um, Austin, always a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm sure we'll have you back again. Uh, definitely if you're a first responder family or somebody that supports first responders, you know, take a look at leoweekend.com. Um, and Austin, I, I know you're a busy guy. Thanks for taking some time with us today. Pleasure. Thank you for having me as always. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you again. And thank you to all of you who have either watched or listened to this episode of Public Safety Talk Radio. And we'll be back with you next week with another great guest. Public Safety Talk Radio is produced by the POCUA. POCUA is a consortium of financial institutions serving law enforcement as well as other first responders and public safety professionals. To learn more about our association and to find one of our credit unions or service providers near you, go to www.policecreditunions.com. And always remember, if you aren't working with one of our POCUA credit unions, you're just banking with an institution that just so happens to serve first responders. As a public safety professional, you and your family deserve better. Find a POCUA credit union today. Thank you.